Hey everybody. Today we're adding columns to data frames in R using the mutate verb in the dplyr package. Of course, there are many ways to add columns or change columns in a data frame in R. Mutate's a very um, natural and modern way to do that. I'm gonna be working with the built-in islands data set. Um, in R, that's actually a named vector. So I'm gonna start by actually making it a data frame with the data.frame command. Um, I'm also cleaning it up a tiny bit here with this command. Let's take a look at that data set. Great. So we have um, 48 islands in this data set. We've got the name of each island and we've got the area in square miles. So let's add a column to this data frame that's representing the area in square kilometers. Again, we're gonna use the mutate command. And like all the verbs in the dplyr package, the first argument here is supposed to be the data frame in question. Next, we need to specify the name of the new column we want along with the formula um, that tells R how to get it. So how about area in kilometers, square kilometers, of course, is going to be area times the conversion factor, which is 2.59 square kilometers per square mile. And I actually wanna save this. So how about let's just overwrite the, um, the islands data frame with this new data frame that is the output of the mutate command. And we can take a look at that and you can see it's added on a column at the end. If you don't want to maintain the columns that you had from your original data set but only want a data frame with the new columns, that's gonna be the transmute command. So let's copy and paste and um, get a data frame that just has that. So this is only gonna have the areas in square kilometers. There it is. Okay, so there are any number of advantages to the mutate command. I wanna illustrate just a couple of them in passing here. Um, let's see here. This time let's use a, a pipe operator. That's gonna make things just a little bit neater. So we'll pipe the islands data frame into a mutate command. And um, I'm gonna also wanna save this. So let me do that right now. Let's make sure I save that and don't forget. Um, let's add a few new columns all at once. That's the first real advantage of the mutate command. Um, first of all, let's um, suppose that we were wanting to merge this data frame with other things. We might want a column labeling each of these land masses as islands. So how about um, let's put a column called type and it'll just be islands. Let's just start with that and we'll view it again. So it has taken that single value and um, used it over and over and over again to give me a column that is all just the character value, islands. Um, let's see here. Let's also suppose that we just wanna add a vector of numbers to this for some reason. So how about um, number, and just for neatness, I'll make that uh, a lowercase u. And this isn't gonna have a lot of meaning in the present context, but let's do just the numbers one to 48. So we got a new column there. Um, so if we had a vector of um, 48, for instance, regions of the world, um, then that might be something we could add here. Let's see here, there's any number of good helper verbs that are useful in mutate. For instance, um, we could do, um, let's rank these according to how, um, how big they are. And the helper verb there is rank, and we want area, or area in kilometers, it doesn't really matter. So now each one of these is gonna be an integer representing where in um, the order of areas each one of these fall. Um, I think, the last thing I wanna show here, again, doesn't have too much relevance for this particular data frame, but um, comes up frequently in practice, are the commands for the previous entry and the next entry. So how about, let's start with previous. I want to um, have the previous value in the data frame. So this is lag. And um, I don't know, let's just do number to make this as clear as possible. And while we're at it, let's do next which is lead of number. When we look at this, you can see um, that the previous, the second um, row in the data frame gave me the first value of number. The third row in the data frame gave me the second value of number. 
Notice that the very first entry is an NA because nothing comes before the first entry. Similarly, the next column has been formed by taking the next entry in the number vector. All right, that's enough to get you started on the mutate command in the dplyr package.